Congratulations, Dr. Aishan. You just announced a $335 million debt financing to finalize your North America's first permanent magnet facility. I don't even know where to start. Where do you want to start? Look, first of all, we are extremely excited ourselves that uh, we made that happen. And it was an extremely smooth and very quick process. And we are proud of that. Um, yeah, and we just take it from there. As you might have seen, the facility, the walls are already up. Um, so we are in the middle of getting our facility up and running in the next couple of months and by hopefully by end of next year. Um, yeah, and it's just an incredible step for us to get the financing um, done and signed. Well, uh, please understand, we've been tracking this industry for over a decade and a half and nothing has been smooth and seamless in this industry. Can you tell me how you have managed to arguably come out of nowhere, secure this financing, and have a timeline for production as early as 2025? Did I read that correct? Yeah, end of 25 is our target. Um, and it's a challenging target. I agree on that. Yeah, it's a good question. And just to make the obvious clear, it's not only us. It's really the effort of many, many people involved. And just to give you a few bullet points, so first of all, there is this dynamic right now, getting the uh, resilient supply chain for critical minerals and permanent magnets, especially on US soil again. It's critical for EVs. It's critical for the military fares, for a lot of industrial applications, alternative energies. So there's a huge momentum. Second point, we are the only player in the Western world that is still there who can do that. We, we produce permanent magnets for 40 years. Um, so we have all this know-how, and I think this is the big difference to what you referred a little bit. Um, we know what we are doing. So we have to know how, obviously, we automize more. We want to make the facility state-of-the-art. Um, there's a lot of in innovation involved, but we are not doing it from scratch like a lot of others are doing. And they are struggling a little bit more for obvious reasons. And then last but not least, we have GM, fantastic partner there. Um, um, we work very closely together. We developed a great magnet or um, together with them. And they also support us a lot on getting this done. The DOD is fully behind us. We are working for them for many, many years, but produce for them on, uh, on European soil in Germany. And they always ask us, hey, let's go to the US. And when we had the opportunity together with GM, we just brought them together and fantastic support. Ara, we had a, have a new owner. They um, signed and bought us last October, so not even a year. The, process, the program was already fully on speed. Um, they want to grow with us. They saw this opportunity. And then last but not least, we had also chosen the right consultants. Um, here, sometimes you have to be lucky. And most important, it's just the VAC team. I, the, these guys and girls, they are just fantastic. They know what they are doing. They are fully committed. And they are exciting to see such a great opportunity growing. So it's it, a lot of things came together at one point, and here we are. Okay, well, there's a lot of questions I have for you. Yeah. How about we start with with what I know our audience is going to be interested in, which is yeah. why General Motors? You could have worked with any automotive company. Why GM? So first of all, we are talking to everyone, uh, and everyone wants to work with us and work something out. General Motors, they were really the first one. So we didn't come to them and tell them, let's do this. They came to us actually and said, there's a huge issue uh, on the supply chain of permanent magnets. We want to have a resilient supply chain outside China on US soil. Um, and they learned very quickly, as you noted, um, we are the only producer in the Western world. So they approached us and then the debate started. And then it came from, can you produce it in Germany to Hey, we want to have it in the US. Okay, what do we have to do for that? And it took more than a year to get it done, um, but it was a great partnership and still is, and hopefully will be in the next couple of years um, to get this done there. And they have a specific team. So I think that's the difference between some of their yeah, competitors we see in the market. They have a strategic procurement team. So they really think ahead and they figured out there will be an issue um, down the road. The demand will exceed the supply in the Western world. And they want to secure the resources and technology now. 
And this is what makes them smart and ahead of the wave. And they are defining the industry right now. And it's great to work with them saying that. We work with all the others. We are also exciting, hopefully, for the next couple of projects um, we are working on. We've been tracking the different states and, of course, provinces in North America and their different incentives for getting companies. Well, company, there's not that many companies that can do what you can do uh, into their different regions. Can you tell me what brought South Carolina over the, the end the end line? I know they love their football in South Carolina. How did South Carolina get this amazing European co- company to commit? There were a couple of things. So let's circle back. We had more than 100 locations in the beginning when we started the process. And we had obviously a long list of criteria, some non go, no go criteria, and the others um, where we tried to balance. And South Carolina actually um, hit it for several reasons. The supply of good energy and also alternative energy. Um, it's more than 50% at the moment, and they want to further increase. Um, they have a lot of experience with German companies, by the way. If you look at the infrastructure and the large investors in South Carolina, they actually speak my language pretty well. Um, um, we got a lot of support from the government there, um, all the permits. It was incredible. We found a plot of land that perfectly matches what we need, um, also access then to the energy we need. Um, this was just fantastic. And then... One, of, one important criteria, we were looking for an area where the people um, still are working hard. Um, they appreciate a good job because we want to offer great jobs um, where we train the people a lot. It's high level jobs. Um, and I think we found the right place in South Carolina um, where we, we didn't want to be too close to a large city, but also not too far away that we have um, enough people that we can hire. And this combination just came together there. Uh, Eric, when this news crossed my desk, I received so many emails from bankers everywhere with, this isn't a government financing, this is a private financing. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you put this together? Yeah, actually, um, this was already in the process when we talked to General Motors. We have a great agreement with them, uh, a fantastic partnership, and from me, one and a half years ago, whenever we were sitting in Detroit, uh, it was clear it will be some kind of structured finance because it's a specific project with a specific customer for a specific period that we can extend, obviously. Um, So for for me, this was clear. Um, And when we approached the banks, um, they have great background also mining. Um, They were very exciting about this opportunity um, because... I think what made a huge difference, um, one of the first questions was kind of between the lines, do you know what you are doing? And we could always tell them, hey, we do this for a living. We we are a 101 year old company and permanent magnets, what we will do in South Carolina, you know, state of the art at the edge, um, obviously the best magnet on the planet will be produced there. But we produce permanent magnets for 40, exactly 40 years this year. So we know what we are doing. Um, we have a great partner with General Motors. This is related to the military phase. We get um, SPHER, um, the DOD is involved. Um, Washington is involved. Everyone is exciting about that. We know where we get our supply from. This was a home run. And um, our team was very well prepared because they were very curious. We had hundreds, if not thousands, of questions um, that we could answer right there and also the Aura team by the way did a great job sometimes I was surprised hey they know as much about Bach as we do so fantastic fantastic um, job from from the Aura financing team yeah and this is how we brought it over the finishing line Um, at the end of the day it's um, the facts the analysis and I always say the last 10% is really are the people in the room the right people do they trust each other and get along And that's the little secret sauce there. And actually, it's not a secret sauce. It's straightforward. It's a a great deal. Um, The banks will be very happy. Um, And we are happy to get this done because we are running fast, getting the facility up and running. And um, yeah, first equipment will come in a couple of weeks. So we need the cash as well, obviously, um, to get this up and running. We are happy. 
Well, of course, the U.S. government isn't to be left on the side. They're coming in with, what, a $117 million uh, 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 grant, or how does that work? Exactly. So we, we, we get support from Title III money from DOD, and we also have a 48C, um, 48C um, tax incentive. Um, this works pretty well. Um, and again, we produce in Ger out of Germany for the DOD um, already permanent, permanent magnets for many, many years. And they always ask us to go on US soil. Um, but it was never uh, the capacity that made it rational economically to build something. And when General Motors approached us, um, it was just there that we do this together. And therefore, it was obviously that they want to help us. Um, plus, you have to understand, this is not a plain level feed um, that permanent magnets is on in the Western world. We are still there because we are a niche player. We do the fantastic magnets, but not on a large scale. All the large scale products are at the moment all in China. It's one supplier for the Western world, fully independent. And um, the DOD um, and the U.S. government overall, it was not only the DOD, also the other um, agencies, they fully understood um, we have to do something in the Western world um, to become more independent. And therefore, they supported us because they also understand for a company like us, such a huge investment is not a piece of cake. And for everybody out there racing to LinkedIn to find out what your background actually says, because you're making this sound so incredibly seamless. Um, you've actually been with uh, Voc now for eight years. And mm -hmm. to me, what was intriguing is your doctorate is in strategic management. Can you talk to us a little bit more about how that might be giving you some real competitive advantages? Because this is a geopolitically charged industry. This is a challenging industry. The intellectual talent you would have to attract to your company and manage would be significant. And you, of course, have international relations all tossed into the, into your negotiations and planning. Can you comment on that? Uh, look, 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 uh, probably it's a clear overstatement that there's any relationship to my uh, PhD in strategy. Uh, it's really the team who, who did this fantastic job. Saying that, um, what the whole team um, is, is doing there, I think we have the capability to take a step back um, and get out of our small magnet business only. And this is, by the way, what I often see in the supply chain. Everyone is just playing for themselves in their small little worlds. But taking a step back, what is really the challenge of the Western world? And I mean it as a, in, as a political statement, as well as the industry. We have to think the whole chain. And if everyone is just fighting for himself, we will not get anywhere. And you observe the industry for ages. You know what I'm talking about. Everyone has his opinion, but doesn't want to talk to blah, blah, whatever. And what we do is we bring together everyone that is required, sit together what is necessary, that all stakeholders get what they need to play in that supply chain. Uh, and maybe that's a little bit the difference, um, what we did, but also General Motors, together with us, um, are doing. Um, and a few others are following right now and I'm very excited for the other projects going to come. So that's the strategic part. I'm not thinking only about us, but um, we can only succeed if all our partners succeed. And that's what strategy again is all about. Well, Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Congratulations on your ongoing uh, successes and uh, we look forward to your next update. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. It was a pleasure.